Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we want to talk about the EKG in PE. Let me see if I can get my pen to work here. doesn't want to agree with me. So we're going to talk about EKG in pulmonary embolism. And this is a normal EKG that we're looking at right now. And it's sort of what's normal about it. Well, the voltages aren't too big. Everything looks about the right size. It's sinus rhythm because you've got a positive... P wave in two and the P wave is negative in AVR, so that's coming from the right spot. It's got a normal left axis because you're positive, you're mostly upright here in lead one, and you're mostly negative here in lead three, so that's a left axis, so that's, you know, the heart's sort of at the right orientation. And everything else about this looks good. All the ST segments look like they're flat and down the bottom, so that's good. So in PE, what are the changes that can occur in PE? Well, the truth is, there is a million different things that can occur with uh, the EKG in PE. But the most common thing is just sort of you get a little tacky. You get a little uh, ST, T wave changes that are non-specific. So these things over here start to flip or get flat. They sort of flatten out or they're just non-specific. They're not right. They're probably the most common things. And normal is also common. You can have a normal EKG in PE. But they're not the classic things. People often want to talk about the classic findings in PE. So let's quickly go over those classic findings. It'll be useful for you in, I don't know, probably in um, exams, if nothing else. So let's pull up this puppy. So the first classic finding in PE is this S1, Q3, T3. You'd think it occurred in every single person with PE, but it actually only occurs in about 15% of people with PE. But you hear it all the time. And all it is is a sign of right heart strain which can occur in PE, it can occur in heart failure, it can occur in asthma, it can occur in lots of different things, a COPD. But it's basically just a big S wave in lead one, which you wouldn't normally expect, uh, some Q waves in lead three, which you didn't normally expect, and some T wave inversion in lead three, which you don't normally expect. That's S1, Q3, T3, only occurs in 15% of people with PE. Let's do some more. So another one is a right heart deviation or right axis deviation and what does that mean again this is an evidence of there's some strain on the right side of the heart because that clot is stuck in the lungs and the right side of the heart is trying to push the blood past the thing and it's getting really strained and it's dilating so normally if you remember in the normal ekg this is mostly upright in a normal person this one now is mostly negative and this one used to be mostly negative with you have a normal left axis but now it's upright. And so over there in AVFS2 is mostly upright. And these are the leads that are on the right side, that point mostly to the right side. So this is evidence of right axis deviation, which again suggests there's strain, there's even dilation on that right side. So you get a right axis deviation. So that's another classic thing you'll find. Let's see what else we can do. One finding that I think until recently was really underrepresented and misunderstood was uh, T-wave inversion in the... Uh, V1, V2, V3, V4. We used to see these big, deep T-wave inversions and think ischemia, ischemia, ischemia. No, this is also a sign of right heart strain. So if you see somebody with you know, deep T-wave inversions in the precordial V1, V2, V3, V4 leads, think about it, but also down here in the inferior leads, the leads that look down at the bottom of your heart, if you see T-wave inversion down there, again, this suggests right heart strain. So maybe we can go back to our normal. So remember that you know tachycardia, non-specific changes are really common. Uh, right axis deviation is really common, where these get really, really positive down here and negative here, unlike the normal one. So right axis deviation. The S1, Q3, T3 thing. So these T waves become inverted. You get a Q wave in front here of the QRS complex. You get a big S wave like this, big S wave that comes down like this. That's S1, Q3, T3. Only 15% of people get that. But then the key thing here again, this is a normal, but in right strain, you get these T waves in this anterior sort of precordium thing that all get inverted. And these T waves become inverted down here. And these ones down here get inverted. And these can even be inverted down here. So T inversion. V1 through V4 and uh, lead 3 and 2, for example. So they're the main things to think about with the EKG and PE.